you or resist you and you want to talk to somebody you need something you are going for an interview and then you are thinking these people they'll bring a kind of question that nobody will be able to answer how would you prepare for the interview if you knew that there was no question that you couldn't answer jesus said if you have faith if you can only believe all things are possible to him who believes that's miracle right there if you develop your faith miracles will be abundant in your life you just wake up in the morning and you know that you know without any shadow of doubt that whatever the lord puts in your heart you are going to do it will be done i said it will be done you just know that all things are possible to him who believes that's how we talk about faith the kind of faith that produces miracles and when you come to church you know people go to different churches you know they go to a church there another church downtown another church in that area and they say i go to church what well, is good to go to church what i'm asking you is do you develop your faith there are you hearing the word of god that develops your faith that makes you to know they can take you from the ground level and take you to the highest floor in the building just by faith here it will happen i'm looking at matthew chapter 17 and i'm looking at verse 20 matthew chapter 17 looking at verse 20 and jesus said unto them because of your unbelief stop there for a moment many times we come we're asking the lord a question and you know some of these uh, preachers and bible readers and theologians they have a lot of answers they give us the disciples came to jesus christ and he said why could we not cast him out just that one word why have you ever asked a question in your life oh lord look at me look at my life why oh lord look at my child but why lord look at how many i've taken how many times i've taken this exam and i'm still not getting through but lord why look at i want to get married i tell this one she says no i tell that one she says no but lord why and then we, we, we've gotten married and i need a child and then and there's no child i went to the doctor and they said they couldn't see anything the wife is perfect and the husband is perfect and yet there's no child and i'm asking the question but why and then you're trying to get a job then you got a job after you got the job they interviewed you for this thing and then by the time you are going to they said we're well, sorry if you can take this lower position then you'll stay if not then find your way you say well i'll take it but the salary is not even able to do anything and then you come back. but you say lord i'm a christian but why every time you have a question like that why what do people tell us some preachers will tell you oh, because the devil is too strong because satan is too powerful because the enemy is back at home they will not leave you alone or because uh, this and that or because but jesus said because of your unbelief anytime you have a question in your mind why the answer is because of your unbelief anytime you're wondering but why the answer is what tell me out loud because of my personalizing because of your unbelief but look at what jesus said verily i say unto you certainly i say unto you assuredly i say unto you if ye have faith as what as a grain of mustard seed very small faith as a grain of most this thing we're calling faith must be very mighty for a little sin like that to be an explosive a great great bulldozer even though it's a very small thing if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder place and the bible and jesus said and it shall and it shall remove any mountain in your life tonight i come with that faith and when i tell that mountain to go it is gone and it doesn't matter how big the mountain is it doesn't matter how long the mountain has stayed there if we just have faith together and jesus said verily i say unto you if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed 
ye, not they. You know, theologians will say, if the apostles were here, they would have said to this mountain, oh, I wish those great giants of old were here today. If those great giants could come today, they will know Jesus said, you will say, and this is our day. This is our time. And when we say to that mountain, be thou removed, it's gone in Jesus' name. And then this one interests me. This will to interest you. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Just, just, just having faith. Just having faith. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Uh, you know something? I, I don't like to go to a place where somebody is, uh, they read the Bible and they are describing the length of Noah's ark, the height of Noah's ark. How many windows do you have in Noah's ark? And is it on the ground of Noah's Is it a carpet? or is it wrong? What do I need that for? Give me faith and I'm through. What I need is faith. You know all these people that go to tell tales and describe this and describe that. What you need is faith. You want to solve problems in your life and you want nothing to be impossible unto you. You want to have that dynamite that we call faith that will kind of blow out and destroy every mountain in your life. You don't need the description of you know, Noah's Ark and then the perimeter how long is the perimeter of Sodom and Gomorrah what do I need that for give me faith and then all my problems are solved that's why I come to you tonight talking about faith the faith for miracles today it will come upon your life in Jesus name now tonight I'm going to divide my message how many parts you know always three i'm wondering why it's always three but tonight maybe it will be for another time but just then just three. one two three number one the voice and the power of miracles the voice and the power of miracles miracle has a voice and that voice speaks to you when a miracle happens that miracle has a voice and has some power, some authority. The voice and the power of miracles. Number two, the variety and the plurality of miracles. Variety and plurality of miracles. Number three, victory through faith for miracles. Victory through faith for miracles. Number one, what's number one again? the voice and the power of miracles we're looking at exodus chapter 4 exodus chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 1 and moses answered and said but behold they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the lord has not appeared unto thee the lord said unto him what is that in thine hand he said a rod and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and moses fled from before it and the lord said unto moses put forth thine hand and take it by the tail and he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand that's a miracle i said that's a miracle it was an ordinary rod lifeless and then he threw it on the ground between his hand and the ground a transformation took place and then it became a serpent that's a snake and moses ran away and god said don't run away catch it by the tail and he did it became a rod again and then it says in verse 5 that they may believe that the lord god of thy fathers of their fathers the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob has appeared unto thee and the lord said furthermore unto him put now thine hand into thy bosom and he put his hand into his bosom and when he took it out behold his hand was leprous as snow and he said put thine hand into thy bosom again and he put his hand and, and plugged it out of the bosom and behold it turned again as his other as his other flesh and it shall it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee neither hearken to the voice of the first sign neither hearken to the voice of the first miracle then it says that they may believe 
the voice of the latter sign the voice of the latter miracle what does that mean when you perform that miracle you don't have to talk too much the miracle will speak to them it has a voice will convince them that the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob has sent you unto them the power of miracles the voice of the miracle when a miracle happens in your life then you don't have to talk too much the people you are talking to they know that god is alive and the people you have been preaching to you have been saying come to christ come to christ and they say which christ i also go to church when a miracle happens in your life that miracle will have a voice that will speak to them convincingly hey this is the kind of god we need to follow because he's still doing wonderful things today that wonder is in your life already in first kings chapter 18 verse 21 first kings chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 21 and elijah came and unto unto all the people and said how long hold ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but he bear then follow him and the people answered him not a word they had been farming for three and a half years in the land and things were going very bad and then Elijah came to them and said, What are you doing? Who do you want to worship? Are you, want to, are you going to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Are you going to keep on worshiping Baal? If God be God, follow him and worship him. But if Baal, then follow Baal and worship Baal. They couldn't answer a word. How are we going to convince these people that God is still alive? How are we going to convince these people that the time of famine and the time of need and the time of scarcity, everything is going to be forgotten today? How are we going to convince them that there's going to be a transformation tonight? I said there's a transformation tonight. How do we convince them? Because now Elijah came and he spoke and he said, if it's God, then follow. If it's Baal, then follow. And they were quiet no answer look at verse 30 verse 30 now in verse 30 here we're told and elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down and elijah took 12 stones and according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the lord does it do it in the name of the lord preach in the name of the lord sing in the name of the lord pray in the name of the lord if you do everything in the name of the lord the final result will be a miracle and we come here tonight in the name of the Lord. You listen to our choir, they sang in the name of the Lord. You saw, you saw the one that read the Bible reading in the name of the Lord. And you hear the preaching in the name of the Lord. And when it comes to the time of prayer, it will be in the name of the Lord. And once we do everything in the name of the Lord, the result will be a miracle. I said the result will be a miracle. And that miracle will be in your life. And it's coming tonight in Jesus' name and then in verse 32 and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the lord and he made a trench about the altar as great as as would contain two measures of seed and he put the wood in order he put the wood in order uh, you know sometimes in our worship disorderliness could hinder the move of god god is not the author of confusion of disorder but when everything is orderly what ought to be done and then the next one and then the next one and the way we're seated quiet is a beautiful congregation i, I think uh, god is looking at you and god is saying you're going to get your own before we leave in jesus name the orderliness the quietness the serenity the peace the, uh, the order the unity in the midst of the people of god god will give you your miracle 
and then it says he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill for barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood in verse 34 and he said do it the second time and he did it the second time and they did it uh, do it the third time and they did it the third time and the water ran around about the altar and he filled the trench also with water and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. I have done all these things at thy word. That's the path to a miracle. When everything is done according to the word of the Lord. When there's nothing of self, nothing of tradition, nothing of idolatry nothing of magic nothing of satan nothing of the flesh when everything is done at thy word if you want the miracle to continue and if you want even after we finish all these uh, three days of special meeting if you want the power of god to be moving and flowing in the church all you need to do is to be very sure you do everything at his word according to the word and then that i've done all these things at thy word in verse 37 hear me O lord hear me that these people may know that thou art the lord god God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again verse 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God the miracle had spoken to them convincingly the miracle had turned their minds the miracle had convinced them that the Lord is God miracles have voice and the voice is a voice of authority and conviction that brings conviction to the people because of what he has done because of what we know because of what we see we know that this god is the almighty god i'm now in the new testament in john chapter 3 john chapter 3 miracles a voice that speak convincingly and that's why we're talking about miracles that's why we pray for miracles that's why we exercise faith in the lord to receive miracles from the lord in john chapter 3 verse 1 there was a man of the of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi teacher master we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Nicodemus, you are a Pharisee. How do you know that? Nicodemus, you are just a religious ruler leader. How did you know that, that Christ came from God? Here is the reason for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him the miracle was the voice that convinced nicodemus that christ was the master rabbi the teacher come from god because nobody could have done all those miracles except god be with him john chapter 2 in john chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 john chapter 2 verse 5 and his mother said unto the servants whatsoever he says unto you tell me the rest that's how miracles come that's how miracles come sometimes those things they look unreasonable unrealistic you know there are people that are always judging the preacher they're not listening they're not as they're not assimilating what the preacher is saying they're judging either they are judging the language the english or the action or the length of the preaching we used to 20 minutes that's not a sermon that's a sermonette i preach sermon not sermonette you understand i said you understand because sermonettes make christianity 
I want to make Christians out of you. And it's going to take the word of God. And then when that word comes to you, makes you strong. And you are going to be strong. You know, but you know, there's people that are just judging. But Mary said unto the servants, whatsoever, what it may look unrealistic, it may look unreasonable, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Look at this man, he has a withered hand. And Jesus said, stretch out the withered hand. How reasonable is that? Don't worry about that. Just do it. And then Jesus saw a man that was lame. And he said, get up, on, get up on your feet. How reasonable is that? Don't worry about whether it's reasonable or not. Don't judge. Just do it. Somebody was blind and Jesus made clay and then even put on the eye. If the eye wasn't blind before, when you make clay and you put it on the eyeball, now you make the eyes really blind. Now go to the pool and wash. Don't ask any question. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And he did it. That's how they got their miracles. You know, in, in Africa where I'm coming from, they, they just believe the word of God. And once we say, hey, get up. They just get up and they get miracles. 